engine start and lift off. The load relief kick rate is in, vehicles responding, recovering very nicely from the liftoff. Well, certainly one of the most challenging parts of any mission is launch. Launch is a, is a very complex process. You have to take your spacecraft and get it going from stationary place on the ground to an incredible velocity so that it leaves the Earth orbit and goes on its way to Mars. And in order to do that, the launch vehicle is a big rocket. And basically, it's a controlled explosion. And as is the case with any explosion or anything involving that much energy, it's risky. Every launch is unique. And with the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, we have some special factors that affect our launch mission. The way that the planets orbit the sun, there's a perfect alignment for a transfer of a spacecraft from Earth to Mars every 26 months. And because of that, NASA's Mars Exploration Program is set up to use every one of those opportunities and fly every 26 months. The overall opportunities do vary based upon the relative position of the planets with respect to the sun. For this particular opportunity, it takes more power to get there. And so MRO needs a good, powerful launch vehicle. The other factor that contributes to the launch of MRO is that it's a much larger spacecraft than what we've typically sent over the past decades. And the size is related to the sorts of things we want to do on this mission. An important part of what we're about is resolution. We want to be able to zoom in to scales that we can't see with the Mars Global Surveyor and Mars Odyssey spacecraft. So I need to send back more information. That means I need a bigger antenna. My instruments are more complicated, I need more power, I need bigger solar arrays, that means a bigger spacecraft. Now, it's not outside of other spacecraft that we've built for exploring the solar system, but for Mars, this is a big spacecraft. So, in order to get this thing off the ground, we needed to turn to a good, reliable, precise rocket, and we went to Lockheed Martin and their Atlas V. Yeah, the Atlas V rocket is an extremely powerful launch vehicle. Um, the uh, booster engines alone generate 860,000 pounds of thrust uh, that gets it up into uh, a low Earth orbit. And then the Centaur upper stage has uh, engines that generate 22,300 pounds of thrust to, uh, to put it on a trajectory to Mars. Centaur is an old friend to us here at JPL, a uh, very capable a uh, vehicle designed to put us on a, on a very precisely controlled trajectory, which will probably spare us having to do large tra trajectory correction maneuvers uh, later on as well. It's a perfect fit for the Mars Reconnaissance Orbit. It actually, it's going to take the power of an Atlas V vehicle with over 900,000 pounds of thrust capability to uh, send that spacecraft on its way to Mars. Launches are always inherently risky, but the Atlas V series of vehicles has a good success record, and so we're very confident this will be a routine launch. As you can see here, we're in a lot of chaos right now. We're packing up our boxes. They've been labeled. The pictures are down. We're going to move them all across the street to another building, which is designed for operations. So in a sense, this is a major, major milestone in the project, where we're now transitioning from development into operations. While the rovers have been on Mars, exploring as they have been, looking for water or signs of water, we have been very busy over the last year. We have been assembling our spacecraft bus, and at the same time, we've been putting the final touches on our instruments. Those instruments are being delivered right now as we speak to our spacecraft integrator, where it's coming together as a whole orbiter, as a whole unit that will be launched to Mars. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter is the next generation spacecraft, unlike any other we've ever sent to Mars. It represents a quantum step. It's a major step forward in capability from the previous spacecraft that we've sent. Those spacecraft like 
uh, Mars Global Surveyor and Odyssey have returned fantastic data. But now we're going to send a new generation of spacecraft, a spacecraft with new improved instruments on it with much more capability to examine the planet. We're flying several instruments whose primary objective is going to be to look for places to land. Yes, we will do many, many other things as well, but probably the most long-term important thing will be to find places to land and to ensure that we can land there safely. That's the beauty of an orbital mission, is that the rover gets a very detailed view of one little spot on Mars, and it's very important. But if you land in the middle of Death Valley, you wouldn't know what the rest of the Earth was like. We cover the entire planet of Mars because we fly around it every single day. And that really is MRO's primary charter, is reconnaissance, to look for future landing sites, to look at surface composition, to help the scientists understand and better define what Mars is and what it's made of. That's what's exciting to me. It's a weather satellite. It's a reconnaissance satellite in terms of exploring particular minerals. And ultimately, it's a pathfinder for where that next mission goes.